Hi, I am Thomas Keller from the University of Glasgow and I am going to talk about the work I have done with Michael Stoiver from the University of Edinburgh. In this work we advocate for a domain extensible compiler design through a case study where we optimize an image processing pipeline on mobile CPUs. Why do we care about domain extensibility? After all, domain-specific compilers, such as Halide for image processing, provide both convenient programming and high performance. In Halide, you describe what to compute by writing a high-level algorithm and you control optimizations separately by writing a schedule. This is in con contrast to writing high-performance low-level code such as in C, where algorith algorithm and schedule are intertwined. The issue is that domain-specific compilers rely on a fixed set of abstractions and optimizations. Because of this, they lack flexibility and extensibility. This issue is reflected in the Halai development roadmap itself, where the following questions are asked. How do we make Halide easier to extend? How do we make Halide more useful on current and upcoming hardware? And how do we make Halide more useful for new types of applications? This is why there is a strand of compilers such as Lyft that aim to be domain extensible. Such compilers are more flexible because they have an extensible set of abstractions and optimizations. However, are domain-extensible compilers competitive with domain-specific compilers? In practice, we observed that Lyft performs poorly compared to Halide on image processing pipelines. As you can see on this figure, Lyft only reaches a third of the runtime performance achieved by Halide on our case study. This poor performance is explained by the absence of optimizations that are important and well known in the image processing domain. In this work, we extend the compiler for RISE, which is inspired from Lyft's, with these missing well known optimizations. This allows us to outperform Halide on our case study, illustrating that domain extensibility can actually be competitive. How is this domain extensible compiler designed? We build upon recent work that combines two functional languages. A high level program is written in RISE to define what to compute and an optimization strategy is written in Elevate to control optimizations. The compiler then rewrites the high-level program into a low-level program according to the optimization strategy. The obtained low-level program explicitly encodes implementation decisions and low-level code such as OpenCL can be generated from it. Crucially, both languages are extensible. On the left, computations are expressed as compositions of extensible and reusable patterns in RISE. Some patterns are high-level, which means that they define semantics, but do not have any implementation. Other patterns are low-level and have a clear implementation. On the right, Optimizations are expressed as compositions of extensible and reusable rewrite rules in Elevate. This extensibility allows us to add new optimizations without redesigning the compiler. New patterns, rewrite rules and strategies can be introduced for a specific domain, a specific hardware target or even for a specific program. I will now illustrate how compilation works with a dot product example. The dot product is defined on the top left as combining two input arrays A and B with zip to then multiply pairs of elements using map and finally 
summing the result using reduce. You can read the little triangle as then. So zip, then map, then reduce. It is syntactic sugar for function application and function composition. A trivial optimization strategy lower dot is defined on the top right. It applies a single rewrite rule reduce map fusion which fuses a map followed by a reduce into a single sequential reduce. Rewriting is precisely controlled by the lower dot optimization strategy. Apply once results in a depth first traversal which stops when reduce map fusion can be successfully applied. Let us look at how this traversal behaves step by step. The first attempt fails on the entire dot program because there is no direct match with the left hand side of the rewrite rule. The second attempt on zip also fails and the third attempt succeeds. Now there is a clear match with the left hand side of the rewrite rule which is applied. We can say that the resulting program is low level because it only contains patterns that have a clearly defined implementation. C code is now generated the reduce sec pattern has been translated into a sequential reduction loop, while the zip, FST and SND patterns have been translated into plain array indexing. Let's move on to our actual case study, which is the Harris Corner and Edge Detector, a well-established image processing pipeline. On the left, you can see an example input image. In the middle, the computational flow of the operator, and on the right, the output of the operator. In this output, corners and edges are visible and can be used for further processing. Notice how the Harris operator is composed of pointwise and convolution operators. How can we represent such operators in RISE? As you can see on the left example, pointwise operators are defined using zip to pair image elements and map to apply a function to each pair of elements. As you can see on the right example, convolution operators are defined using slide to create neighborhoods and a map pattern which reduces these neighborhoods. The two-dimensional patterns that you can see on this, in these programs are actually defined as compositions of one-dimensional patterns. We then define the entire Harris operator by putting together all of its components. There is a clear correspondence between the code on the left and the computational graph on the right. Note that the final RISE program only contains generic high-level patterns and basic language constructs. No image-specific internal representation is required. Now that we can represent the Harris operator, we can start optimizing it. On the left of this slide, you can see the optimized halide CPU schedule that we use as our reference. This schedule is taken from the official halide GitHub repository. We highlight the effect of the schedule on the Harris internal representation of the lowered code. The Y dimension is split into an outer parallel loop in brown and an inner sequential loop in pink, as highlighted in orange, gray, ix and iy are stored inside this parallel loop, but computed as required inside the sequential loop, as highlighted in blue. Finally, the x dimension is vectorized as highlighted in green. 
Let's take a step back from this internal representation and visualize the optimizations with a figure. The upper part of this figure shows the input image with three colored channels on the left and the final output on the right. Lines of output are split into chunks of lines and each chunk is processed in parallel along with its dependencies. The schedule defines which intermediate results are stored in memory and when to compute them. This implicitly results in operator fusion and circular buffering. Fused operators are computed without storing intermediate results in memory. Here you can see that the SX and SY operators are fused together and that the times, plus and coercity operators are also fused together. As for circular buffers, they are used within each parallel chunks, where lines are computed sequentially. A circular buffer only stores the last required lines of intermediate results instead of complete images. This leverages both the spatial locality of the computation and the temporal locality of sequential execution. Finally, as you can see at the bottom, computing each intermediate or output line is also vectorized. Multiple elements are processed at a time. To reproduce these optimizations in our system, we write the SIBA version elevate optimization strategy shown on the left. This strategy is a sequential composition of simpler steps which are further detailed in our paper. It includes fusing operators, splitting the pipeline, circular buffering and vectorization. These simpler steps are themselves precisely controlling the application of many simple rewrite rules. The overall result of applying this strategy to the Harris operator is the program shown on the right. Chunks of lines are created using slide, processed in parallel using Map Global, whose name comes from OpenCL terminology, and circular buffers are used within each parallel chunk through a circular buffer pattern. We added this circular buffer pattern to rise as part of our work as it had no existing equivalent. For space reasons, the gray line, sobel line and coarsity line function definitions are hidden, but they include explicit vectorization patterns. At the end, chunks of lines are joined back together to get the final result. The previous CBUF strategy reproduces the optimizations from the reference halide schedule. However, we can express additional optimizations in our system that are not supported by halide. The two-dimensional convolutions that are found in the Harris operator, SX and SY and PLUS, can be separated into a vertical convolution followed by a horizontal convolution. This separation then enables a register rotation optimization that is similar to circular buffering. Register rotation also leverages spatial and temporal locality, but is more fine-grained and operates on registers instead of memory. We name this new version CBUF plus ROT. To introduce these additional optimizations, we reuse and adapt our previous CBUF version strategy into the CBUF plus ROT version strategy seen on the left, where changes are highlighted in pink. To understand how this strategy works, we take a typical two-dimensional convolution program as example on the right. This program uses a single dot product between the two-dimensional weights and the two-dimensional neighborhood. By introducing a convolution-specific rewrite rule, 
we separate this dot product into two. One for the vertical weights and one for the horizontal weights. Then, using a combination of generic rewrite rules, we push this separation to the surrounding dimension. Now, the program does not create two-dimensional neighborhoods anymore. It first deals with vertical neighborhoods and then with the horizontal ones. Finally, register rotation is applied by introducing a new rotate values pattern. We call it rotate values and not rotate registers because register allocation is the responsibility of the OpenCL compiler, which is down the line. Note that all of the rewrite rules involved in this transformation are trivial, but when we put them together, they lead to complex optimizations. Adding a single rewrite rule can create a rich space of choices. Now that we have seen how optimizations are expressed in our system, what kind of performance do we get? This figure compares the runtime performance of different implementations in megapixels per second. So higher is better. On the top legend you can see the four different ARM multicore CPUs that we evaluated. On the bottom you can see different implementations. One with the OpenCV standard library, one with Lyft from which our work follows, two RISE implementations corresponding to the CBUF and CBUF plus ROT optimization strategies that we have seen, and finally the Halide reference. On the right you can also see that we use two different input sizes. What I want to highlight from these results is that all compilers outperform the OpenCV library. And RISE in particular is up to 16 times faster than OpenCV. This clearly shows the performance benefits of whole program optimizing compilers. RISE outperforms Lyft by up to 4.5 times. This is because previous Lyft work lacks crucial optimizations such as circular buffering. RISE CBUF is on par with Halide, although there are some performance differences. This shows that when we apply the same coarse grain optimizations, we obtain similar performance. RISE CBUF plus ROT is faster than Halide by up to 40%. We can really see how the additional register rotation optimization pays off on these mobile CPUs. To conclude this talk, we reproduced an optimized halide schedule by defining compositional elevate optimization strategies, but also by extending and reusing generic rise patterns. The achieved performance is on par with the highly optimized Halide compiler, which is specifically built for image processing pipelines. And we reached even higher performance through additional optimizations that cannot be expressed in a Halide schedule, showing the benefit of compiler extensibility. Thank you for listening to my talk. You can find some relevant links at the bottom of this slide, and if you want to know more about our work, read our paper or talk to us at the conference.